Wait, I swear we've covered this game already. Haven't we? Let me check. Yes, we have. But now we have a new version and a brand new trophy set for this beloved game. So of course, you know, I'm going to have to cover it again. I love the Sly Collection version. Don't get me wrong, but the biggest problem for that particular version is that it's not available on modern hardware. Yes, you can play it on PS4 and PS5 through PS Plus Premium, but only through streaming, arguably the worst way to play it. Now with the return of PS2 Classics with a brand new emulator, Sly 1 is available on native hardware and this is certainly the best way for everyone to be able to check out this game with extra features like the rewind system, button mapping and more. Plus we got a new trophy set that I think might be the best Sly Cooper Platinum we have covered so far. We're going to have to dive in fully for you to see that, but I think this version's Platinum run is stellar. So how many times do we have to do this, old man? Bird? Owl? Never mind, let's just get the van and rob these bitches already. This is... Platinum Hunters, the show where we take a look at everything it takes to get the Platinum Trophy and whether it's worth the effort to achieve it. Of course, check out my other Sly guides if you are playing the Sly Collection instead. I've got a guide for 1, 2, and 3, and eventually I'd like to put 4 on the channel. We'll see. Definitely check those out, and of course, subscribe for more Trophy Guide videos just like this one because you might just find your next Platinum Trophy. I definitely think this trophy run absolutely feels more flavorful than the last time we covered this game. Some cool environmental trophies were just what this Platinum run needed as Sly 1 HD had a grand total of none of those. Now, where you might disagree with me is the inclusion of a trophy for completing Master Thief Sprints. Some people just don't like time trials, I get it, but with the new features of the PS2 emulation like Rewind, you might see that they're not so bad after all. We'll break that trophy down when we get there, but other than that, you essentially need to beat the story, get all the clue bottles, open all the vaults, and get all the environmental trophies. Let's get started on all this busy work, but before we do, note that I have more helpful guides in the description below to help you out if you really get stuck. All right, time to start stealing trophies and whatever else I can get my raccoon paws on. Best place to start is the five trophies you get for completing the game essentially, and they are on screen right now. There's a trophy for beating all the jobs in each episode, which essentially boils down to completing each level. For the first four worlds, we are swiping seven keys to unlock the path to fighting the Fiendish Five member that reigns over the area. In the fifth and final world, we are just making our way through the levels trying to reach Clockwork and shut down his death ray. Clockwork is the main leader of the hate-filled gang, and this beef goes far back in time and makes this revenge-fueled tale awesome. I feel like there might be a bunch of new players with this new release, so I won't spoil too much while going through this guide. On top of completing all the levels, of course, we have to open all the vaults to get all of these trophies on screen now. The rest of the Thievius Raccoonus pages are all stashed in 19 vaults we have to open. Every hub world has them except for the ones where you have to beat up the metal big bird. Every on foot level will have a number of clues you have to find and Bentley won't be able to give you the vault code until you find all of the clues in the level. An easy trophy to get is the get a clue trophy where you need to collect 5 clue bottles which you can handily do in the first level after the tutorial. Also note that you won't be able to open your last vault until you defeat the last boss and finish the story. Then you can go back and claim the last page for the family book. If you're having trouble with a certain level's clue bottles, what you can do is unlock the Operation Blueprints from the vaults, and then you'll be able to see the bottle locations in your Binocucom going forward. 
The blueprints will always be given to you from the third vault in every area, and then finding the rest of the bottles becomes trivial and you won't need an outside guide. There are also some trophies you unlock for collecting and using new Cooper family techniques that are given to you with every page you collect from the vaults. First trophy you can get is the Share What's Mine trophy for defeating two or more enemies with the same mine. After you open your seventh vault, you will receive Rob McCooper's patented explosive hat technique, which can be thrown down and used as a mine. Then you just need to place it in the path of two enemies and boom, double kill. This next technique is extremely useful. No More Beaches for Sly is the trophy for discovering Suzanne Cooper's water safety technique in your 10th open vault. Now when you fall in water, you won't lose a horseshoe or drown. That is helpful. There is even one for falling off ledges, making you way less likely to die. You get the Super Cooper Trophy when you open your 14th vault and discover how to do Sir Augustine of Cooper's Defy Gravity Technique. Now you can throw yourself off of cliffs for fun and you will just pop back up to where you fell. Both of these are seriously useful power-ups. Lastly, when you get Bruce O'Coop's Hacking Technique, you can use it to unlock the Knowing is Half the Battle trophy. Go Joe! This new ability for your Binocucom lets you see the names of all the grunts in the level, which is pretty cool. But for the trophy to pop, you need to see 10 different enemies' names using the new upgraded Binocucom. All of these new cool abilities are one of my favorite parts of the game, with the other being our next subject of trophies. The boss fights. Damn, do I love the boss fights. And there is a trophy for beating each and every one of them. The Fiendish Five. The gang that stole the Thievius Raccoonus and tried to end the Cooper family legacy. Your main goal in this game is to take down each and every one of them and each fight is different from the last. Especially Miss Ruby's boss. Because it is essentially a rhythm game fight to the death. You fight the final member Clockwork on a jetpack as you have to bob and weave through obstacles while shooting his vulnerable spots. All five of these boss fights are epic and you will have a good time with them. There's one more automatic story trophy after you beat the game called Oh No He Didn't and the reason I'm talking about it at all is because as of recording this video it looks like it's not popping for everyone. There's a lot of people who have reported not getting it after finishing the story, and they should because it's definitely an automatic story moment. That's a shame, but hopefully they can get a quick patch in and I'll update the description of the video if they have totally fixed it. For me, I had no problems with the trophy popping, so it's not happening to everyone, but it is happening to some and I hope it gets fixed pronto. What I really like about this version's trophy set as opposed to the Sly Collections version is that there are now a bunch of cool environmental trophies to grab, making it fun to complete levels again for the umpteenth time with a different goal in mind. Admittedly, some of these are pretty basic and I do them anyways, but some of them are pretty cool as well. The first trophy is one of those basic ones though, and it's in the first level of the Tide of Terror chapter. The trophy is called A Thief Heeds No Warning and you have to destroy four signs in the level A Stealthy Approach. I literally got this in the very first section without even jumping around the big gate. There are two beside the bushes, one beside the ladder and then you just have to find one more. Very easy and basic. But for the Nimble Solutions trophy on the level The Fire Down Below, I never even tried completing the level like this. You have to complete the level without grabbing any hooks, which is mainly in this section here where you have to run on this contraption and get the hooks to move on a conveyor belt. Instead of using the hooks to progress, all you have to do is jump on this little platform here and then you can get up to the gears above and continue through the level. That is not only great for the Master Thief Sprint, we'll get to that later, but also blew my mind. 
probably going to use this on my next playthrough because I think I'm a speedrunner of this game, but I'm not. But I'm going to use it thinking I'm a speedrunner. For the next one, I have done it before, but now we can get a trophy for it. You have the Charming the Library trophy for completing a cunning disguise without using the barrel. Now I tried doing this later in the game using Sly Toon Common Cooper's Shadow Technique and the Huckleberry Cooper's upgrade, but it didn't work. They still detected me. So you need some horseshoes so you can tank some hits and then run past the turrets. In the middle of the level, there is also a shortcut right here if you leave the stack of books next to this bookcase, and then you will skip a portion of the level. As long as you have a horseshoe on you, you can take a hit and then take advantage of temporary invulnerability. Make sure you go in to the level with a gold horseshoe on your back and close to 99 coins so you can regain another one while playing the level. Then this next trophy is really the one that broke my brain while trying to do it. There is the Through the Fire and Planks trophy in the Gunbow Graveyard where you need to take a shortcut over flaming debris by using the Crow's Nest. The Crow's Nest is this part of the ship at the beginning of the level where you have these three ropes leading to the upper deck of the ship where you can get further up and stand on top of the pole. Then you need to do a leap of faith through these flaming debris coming out of the water and land on a platform behind it. This was a trial and error ass trophy fam. I found with a lot of my jumps I just didn't have enough momentum to make it or I didn't jump at the right angle. The best thing you can do is jump from the dangling rope onto the top of the pole and use the momentum to push you into your next double jump onto the platform across the way. This took a bunch of tries and attempts before I could actually stick the landing and make the jump, getting the trophy in the process. I never thought this would be possible to do so I'm really pleased with the way some of these trophies were handled. When we get to Mugshot's compound after making our way through the first level, we can enter the Boneyard Casino and start making some serious money. This is where I farm my lives and horseshoes. But we can also get the sleight of hand trophy if we are sneaky enough. There are four casino enforcers right in the beginning of the level and the trophy wants us to take them out without being detected. That may sound easy, but we can't fully sneak up on them like we can in Sly 2. As soon as you get close, they get alerted and the others come running. So I waited until I got Rob McCooper's patented explosive hat from one of the vaults and used the mines to blow up the guards as they walked by. You can try doing it without it, using the rewind if you mess up, but I found this way much easier. Now that you have broken your way into the joint, we have three trophies to get in the three remaining levels. Starting with Back Alley Heist, we have the What a Pain trophy for destroying seven panes of glass. Right when you start the level, there are two small ones and one big one. So now you just need four more. Break those and then make your way to the midpoint of the level where you can find more of them. If I'm not mistaken, there are about 8 or 9 panes of glass in the whole level, so you have a small cushion if you somehow miss one. Next, we head to one of my favorite levels in the game, straight to the top. I just like how circular the level is, and that your main objective is right where you start the level. But for the Lookout Below trophy, you have to drop 5 of these hanging cars that are scattered throughout the path. Considering each of them have a clue bottle on them, you're going to have to find them anyways. So it's another easy trophy that you can get pretty quickly. Then the final trophy is called The Perfect Date, when you meet up with the lovely Carmelita in Two to Tango. For this trophy, you have to be careful and beat the level without taking damage or falling. So no getting shock blasted, no falling off rooftops, or getting caught by the guards with the comically big guns. You'll have to do this flawlessly. On my first attempt, I literally fell off the roof on my first jump. So I took a do-over. Then I beat it on the second try. It's not hard to do, you just have to be careful. Or, of course, you could use the rewind. That's a strategy too.
Okay, things get a little bit spookier with not just the location. We have the must have been the ghosts trophy for defeating all the voodoo guards in the level, the dreaded swamp path, without being detected. This trophy doesn't start until much later in the level when you start encountering these flash like guys roaming around. There is one stationary and the rest in the final section of the level. Since you have to beat these without being detected, this is another job for the hat mine. This will get the job done easier. Then we have the ectoplasmic slasher trophy in the level a grave undertaking. This trophy sounds difficult with the stipulation of defeating five ghosts in a single attack, but it's not that tough because there's a spot where you can get it done easy. When you get to the section with the three ghost producing tombstones, all you have to do is evade the ghosts until a bunch of them spawn and mob up together. Then. When you have a nice mob of them chasing you, just slap them all with your cane and you'll get this trophy very easily. Now we have the Slyby Nimble Slyby Quick Trophy and this one can be a bit finicky. During the chase scene with the Serpent Dragon Beast thing, I'm not quite sure what it is to be honest, but during that chase scene you need to jump over all the candles that appear. Normally, I would just give them a whack with the cane, but now I have to purposefully slow down and jump in between each of them, so it counts that I hopped over the candles like Jack. The trigger for whether you jumped over it or not can be a little tricky, so I had to use the rewind to go back and try again until the trophy finally popped. Maybe I really did miss it, but I swear I was doing the jumping right. Whatever, I got it in the end. Then the final trophy in the Vicious Voodoo episode is called Slightly Pacifist for beating the Descent into Danger level without defeating any enemies or destroying any alarms. A pacifist's run indeed. You have to dodge enemies and avoid being detected for the entire level and some enemies are going to be in your way as you want to go around them. This is a good time to use the decoy to distract guards and enemies and then just go around them. The main one that gave me trouble was this guard watching over a candle that you need to put out in order for a sliding rail to appear. You need the decoy to get the guard's attention and then the guard needs to break the candle at the same time. Maybe one of the more trickier trophies in the run could be, sure. But if you are careful and use the rewind feature, it's really not that difficult to collect the trophy. Now we just have three more trophies to unlock in the fire in the sky chapter with our good buddy, the Panda King. We have the more annoying one of the bunch first with the seen and wanted trophy in the level, the unseen foe. Contrary to the way Sly likes to do his missions, we now have to alert every flashlight guard and set off every alarm we come across. In the grand scheme of things, not a big deal, but it can be sort of annoying with the monkey guards or whatever they are, I think they're monkeys. You have to get close to them and once they see you, you can proceed to tallywhack them. For the alarms, just activate them. Once you set off the alarm in the vertical tunnel where you have to jump over the lasers, you should get the trophy. For this next trophy, I always do it anyways, over at the Flaming Temple of Flame level, you will get to this section with a bunch of monkeys training on top of poles. Well, you know what? This session's over. You have to disturb all these Mugu monkeys by smacking them with your cane. You have to jump and then cane whack them at the top of your jump in order to reach them, and even then you might miss. Keep trying this from a heightened elevation, no matter where you can find it, and then hit them and do this until they are all gone. Finally, the setting the mood trophy is a complete joke. Start the level Duel of the Dragon, get up to this first area here with the enemy, and then launch these two fireworks right here. That's the trophy. Launching two small fireworks so you can get two pink explosions. Yep, 
that's the trophy it's that easy i guess they didn't want to do the whole don't get hit by carmelita thing again but okay then sure we have just one more trophy to cover here in this guide but don't forget to hit the like button if you're following along and having a good time now we just need to really master this game in order to obtain our shiny new platinum okay now for the challenging part of the run now you have to try and get the speediest thievius trophy by completing 10 master thief sprints they are time trials that unlock in each on foot level once you complete the level and open the vault you hit the hourglass and then the race is on it's very similar to crash bandicoot time trials except there is nothing here to stop the clock the time will continue to go down so while I was trying to beat these times, I just stuck to the levels in the first two episodes, Tide of Terror and Sunset Snake Eyes. Some of these times are going to be pretty tight even if you do a perfect run like the first level of both areas in Wales and Mesa City where I had about a second left on the clock. Thankfully, some of them will be easier thanks to shortcuts like the levels of Fire Down Below and A Cunning Disguise. The key to making sure you beat all these times is that you absolutely can't get spotted. If you do, the time rolls down faster, so no alarms and no being detected under any circumstance. What helped me prepare for these runs was watching YouTube videos of people who have done it before. They gave me an idea of when I can use the roll technique to save time, or when I could skip sections with a well-timed jump. As long as I could match their pace or do it better, then the time trial was pretty much guaranteed. Plus the rewind feature comes in handy when you mess up a jump or miss a ledge. Being able to recover in that way can help you brute force the time trial so long as you had a good start. So now you have all the tools and the knowledge to get this trophy in your collection, but I won't outright say this will be easy for everyone. You still need to be good at the game to beat these, even with the advantage of rewinding. Good luck on this trophy, and Godspeed, my raccoon friend. And with that last trophy swiped, we have completed yet another platinum for the first Sly Cooper game. Sure, there might be some hiccups when it comes to the emulation for it, but having a native version of Sly 1 on modern hardware is a great Thing, and I hope they can do this for Ratchet and Clank as well. But if you have speediest your way through some time trials, collected all the vaults again, did some really cool environmental trophies and collected all the trophies, congratulations! You will be awarded the A Cooper's Pride Platinum Trophy for the PS2 Classics version of Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus. Overall, I personally think that this version of Sly 1 or Sly 3 has the best platinum in the series and it's also a toss up as to which is the hardest because they both have some form of time trials. However, I personally lean to Sly 3 on that one because it does not have a rewind function. Whether you like time trials or not, I have to give the edge to this platinum in terms of enjoyability simply because you don't have to lug out the PS3 or settle on streaming it. This version of Sly Cooper and the Thievius Raccoonus is an excellent way to experience this game and get the Platinum Trophy even with a few emulation hiccups. As excited as I am to play Sly 2 Band of Thieves in this new format, I must say I hope they save it for a rainy day. There are so many great PS2 games that absolutely need to be re-released on modern hardware like Ape Escape 3, the Ratchet and Clank PS2 games, the PS2 God of War games. There is a ton of games to choose from and i imagine sony will slowly glacially slowly start giving us a bunch of bangers from yesteryear that's it for this video thank you guys for waiting on some really substantial content i have a video in the works that has just become an 
absolute monster of a video. I've probably said this a ton of times, but I started working on this video in February and now it's June. So uh, I'm still working on it. I hopefully will get it out soon. I might have to wait a little bit longer to get it out because there's still content coming out for one of the games. But hopefully you'll get it soon and get to enjoy that guide. It's gonna be a doozy. But thank you for watching all the content that I make and uh, these Platinum Hunters videos. I'm gonna try and put them out a little more faster uh, in between making that video. I think it works better that way. I hope all your trophy hunting expeditions, stealing stuff from vaults goes incredibly well. And peace out.